on today's Techno Babble. Live streaming host, CDN or DIY. This is Tech No Babble, your weekly source for church video and graphics news, perspectives, tips, and tricks. And now here's your host, Paul Clifford. Hi, and welcome again to Tech No Babble. This is the show where every week we talk about using video and graphic design in the church. My name is Paul Allen Clifford. I'm your host. I'd love for you to leave your comments, questions, etc., by the way, so just do that under the video. If you're not watching the video, that's fine as well. Just uh, drop me a line, paul at trinitydigitalmedia.com. Leave your comment over on trinitydigitalmedia.com or drop me a line on Twitter, paul at trinitydigitalmedia.com. No, that's my email address. Drop me a line on Twitter, Paul Allen Cliff, P-A-U-L-A-L-A-N-C-L-I-F. Oops. So let's get started talking about live streaming, uh, whether you should use uh, do-it-yourself solution, CDN, or live streaming host. Now, first, let me define some terms. Uh, DIY, when I mean DIY, what I'm thinking is renting space on a server, not doing this with your two megabit up uh, internet connection, that's gonna become untenable real quick and we'll talk about why. Renting space on something like uh, Google Compute Engine, Rackspace, Amazon EC2, S3, what have you, um, that kind of thing. Another possibility is using um, something like a CDN, like Limelight or Akamai. Those are both good solutions and they can deliver your content with no problem whatsoever. In fact, that's probably what the big boys are using. Here's the downside of those two solutions in particular. They can be daunting to figure out. Now, it could be that you've got a volunteer who does this for a living and that's no harm, no foul for them. This person, they can do this in their sleep. But just because someone is technical does not mean that they know everything about every technology. I'm technical, video is my thing, so I thought I would know all about both of these. Tried to set up one of them, took me a couple of weeks, didn't quite get it right. So it can be a little daunting. So I don't want you to think, well, this is clearly the right solution. So we'll just have so-and-so who makes our PowerPoint do it, if that's not their area of expertise. So that's the first thing I want you to consider. Secondly, I want you to consider cost. Some of these services can have very wide variations in their bill from $15 a month, which sounds great to most churches, all the way up to 1,000 for the same service, by the way, just depending on how you use it. So if you make some mistakes, that could be a problem. If you make a $1,000 mistake and you were thinking it was gonna be 15 bucks. On the other end of the spectrum, there are other services that are always the same. Now they tend to be higher priced, but that's easier to budget for you know that your service is gonna be $1,200 a year, for example. That's much easier to budget for than say, well, this month it was 15, but last month it was 300. What will it be next month? Well, depends on the weather. If everyone's on vacation, it could be pricey. If everyone uh, gets stuck at home because there's too much snow on the ground, it could be pricey. If we have Decent but not great weather could be fine. You don't know. So I want you to consider that as you're making your determination. Also consider if there are any hidden costs. Uh, is there any special hardware or software that you need that you don't have? In this situation, 
uh, the DIY solutions do have a bit of an edge because you can rent the software as part of it, depending on how you do it. And so there aren't any hidden costs that come in later. Also, consider reliability. If something is really cheap, but it tends to go out on, say, the day you need it the most, right during your weekend service, and that's not so bueno. No bueno. So I, uh, you need to factor in reliability because too cheap could be there could be cheap for a reason. Um, next, let's talk about advertising and embedding. Uh, there's at least one of the big boy solutions um, that will interrupt your live stream randomly with ads. Just your pastor could be talking about the love of Christ and then all of a sudden, ad. Really. For no apparent reason. And it's not like it pauses and picks right back up. No, you miss that two minutes or whatever. So that's something else that I want you to consider. Also, embedding. Can you embed your stream on your own site? Because if you have a billing dispute or they change their terms of service or what have you, it really doesn't matter what the cause is. If there's some problem while your, uh, after church is ended, but before the next uh, Sunday, it could be that all the people that normally go to your church just don't know where to find you because your account doesn't exist anymore. So that's something else that I would consider as well. Um, server and software costs. As I mentioned earlier, these can vary wildly. Uh, the amount of money that I figured out was an EC2 instance on Amazon with five hours of streaming a month costs about $15.70, unless you forget to shut it down at the end of the day. Then for an entire month, it's about $1,000. So <laughs> you've got to be really careful when you're dealing with this because you don't want to find out a day, a week, or even a month later that you forgot to do something and it's costing you a lot of money. So I want you to consider that when you're factoring in what you're doing. Customer service. It could be that you've got a customer service issue where you really need help during your weekend service. Is there anyone there to help you? Well, it's kind of hard to tell if a smaller company or a larger company is a better solution in this case because it could be the case that a smaller company, the owner will pick up because they really care. It's their company. There's only three people working there. They're going to pick up uh, when you call them. Or it could be that not so much. It could be that they take days off as well they should. They foolishly sleep as well they should. Um, when I say foolishly, I'm joking, of course. Um, so it could be that the big boys have customer service with call centers that's 24 seven, but it could be they're understaffed. It could be that you'll wait on hold for three hours. So it, it's, oh, I've got to call Monday or I try and call Sunday and there's no one there while service is going on. They pick up three hours later. I don't know which is which. You'll have to check with individual companies to see which is best for you. Let's talk about flexibility too. If the service that you choose does not support mobile, I think I would move on. That's because mobile is getting to be a bigger and a bigger deal these days. Um, a large proportion of my live streaming is done with uh, people that do it on mobile. So consider that. Consider if that's possible or if there's a hidden extra fee, because if there is, maybe you need to move on. 
Next, your ability to leave. Do you have a long-term contract? What happens if the price goes up? Are you stuck because of a contract or are you stuck because you bought proprietary software or hardware? Any of those things could cause a problem. So you want to be as flexible as possible. It should be the case that if you decide to change any time between the last service and the next one, as long as you can switch the embed, embed code, the people watching, the people interacting, your online congregation would not know the difference, except they might think, oh, the player looks a little different. But otherwise, they visit the same web address, they do everything the same. That's something for you to consider. Uh, finally, other features. Is there something that I haven't mentioned that's really important to you? DVR support, for example. Uh, if you're using this for a remote campus, it could be that that really, really matters. But if it's online only, maybe it doesn't. Now, I don't want you to go with the service that's more expensive for a feature that you may use. But if it's a feature you're definitely going to, even if you're not quite there yet, then it might be worth the trouble not to have to switch. So these are just some ideas that I have, some notions of what you can do when you're looking for live streaming hosts, whether it's a do-it-yourself solution where you rent server space, a CDN where you handle a lot of configuration but you know it can handle anything you throw at it, or a live streaming host that does a lot of the work makes it a lot easier, but perhaps they're a little more expensive. So consider which is right for you, and I hope you'll choose that as you're going out and changing eternity. If you like this content, please head on over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash gifts, G-I-F-T-S. There I have some free church tech gifts for you, and once you get that, you can also get a free subscription to my email newsletter, which I send out every week. It gives you all the heads up of the things that I'm doing, the resources that I'm providing, and the ways that uh, you and your church can use tech more effectively. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford with TrinityDigitalMedia.com.